As a new retailer of Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint, I needed a paint display cabinet. This video will show how I transformed a 35-year-old dresser into that cabinet. I'm ready. Now I need 30 and 3 quarter inches. 30 and 3 quarter inches. Okay, now I'm going to go test it out in the cabinet. Okay, so I cut this cricket out on the, I mean, I cut this template out on the cricket because uh, the inside the dresser, there is a little bit of a zigzag in the front. So uh, I tested out the paper template and it fits, but of course it's flexible. So we'll see how, how this fits after I cut it out on the scroll saw. created a template on the Cricut using my Cricut uh, using the exact measurements of the inside of the cabinet uh, inside of the drawer I should say and then determining the height of the paint cans that I'm going to store on the shelf and then giving myself a little bit of flexibility depending on the size 
So I'm excited to be, uh, have become recently a retailer for DIY paint, Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint. And my paint is coming, my first shipment is, shipment is coming in about a week. And I am getting my display ready for that. So I have my template cut out on paper in the Cricut. It fits right in the drawer. I am gonna tape it just so it doesn't uh, move around. So I'm just putting this in the center of the hole, giving it a tap. There's a little start then for the drill bit. I'm gonna do that in each of these holes. I went to a power drill rather than my battery operated drill because my battery operated drill just wasn't strong enough to drill through this hard wood or this hard wood on the top. So I changed to the power drill. I also clamped the drawer to the table with a, a scrap board below so that when my drill was going through, if I did go through, and in this case, I was okay going through because it's gonna be on the interior of the two drawers. Uh, so it's not gonna show, uh, but I didn't wanna hit my table. So I put a scrap board clamped between the, dr the drawer and my table. And that got the job done. So now that we've drilled our holes in the side of each of these drawers, and placed them side by side, uh, we're ready to build or cut some shelves. I've already started, I've cut a few. I need to cut a few more out of this piece of underlayment. And uh, after we do that, then we'll work on attaching the two drawers together so that it, it serves as one unit to go on top of the dresser. I've drawn, I've traced one of my shelves onto the underlay, piece of underlayment. And now I'm just going to use a T-square to draw one continuous line across, which I'm going to then cut with my jigsaw. all of the shelves and I have one extra which I'll just keep uh, in the in my booth in case I change the configuration but uh, this is our last one and uh, we're ready to move on to the next step which will be staining well in my case that's using DIY big top as a sealer over all of the entire piece in order to um, we'll do just that to seal it and uh, then we'll go from there, that we do need to attach these. We'll be using some hardware that I have over here to attach the two drawers to each other. And then we will be attaching that unit to the base. And that's just, that's what this hardware is in this baggie. It's surprising how uh, easy it is to attach those and it'll be done in such a way that it can be assembled and then disassembled um, for moving because I'll need to move it into the booth, okay? So I just opened up a new container of Big Top, which is my all-time favorite sealer, DIY Big Top, and poured some of it into an empty container that I had saved so that I don't contaminate my new one. So I'm just gonna close this back up. Here's a tip on closing up your Big Top. Wipe it off, wipe off your rim with a clean paper towel. If anything has um, spilled on your lid, wipe that off before you close it. And I don't close it all that tight. I, I close it tightly enough, but I don't make it really tight because if either it hasn't been wiped off or it's on 
if that happens and it's too tight, it will be very difficult to open it because it is such a strong sealer. So this is my new one. I'm gonna put this back with my, uh, the rest of my paint and then I can use this without worrying about contaminating it because I do have quite a number of shelves to uh, seal. I'm gonna do one at a time here on my little uh, Lazy Susan. I'm using a little chip brush. I, I tried a chip brush a couple of weeks ago with Big Top. Um, I forget it. Oh, on these boards I did it. And I was surprised at how nicely it went on for, this is a Dollar Tree chip brush. is to attach the two drawers together so that they form one unit for the shelving. Let's look over here. We have, we have three holes vertically and parallel to that, we have three holes vertically. So those are for the shelves. Now we have a, an additional two holes on the outer part of each side and that's where the hardware was. I'm gonna use a dowel to fill those holes. And then with a pencil, I'm going to draw a mark so I know where to cut the dowel. So to attach the drawers in the center, we're going to use a long bolt. We have a, a square nut and we have a lock washer. So we've got our bolt coming from the left. And then on the right, we have our lock washer and our square nut. I'm gonna just hand tighten it for now. I don't know that it needs to be squeezed tight um, in order to function. So let's put our, oops, yeah, let's put our shelf supports now up here, right above it. Second from the top. And let's try a shelf in here. grab another shelf. Okay. At this point, we have our two drawers attached. They're not going anywhere. They're not coming apart. So the next step uh, will be to attach this two drawers uh, unit now onto the top of the dresser. Okay, so this is the back of the uh, paint display. We now have the dresser, the two drawers on top, the dresser on the bottom. Simply using these two L brackets should hold it very satisfactorily. I'm going to go there and there and there. And there. I always like to hit it with a punch first so that my drill bit is less likely to move when I first get started. Just a little mark there tells my drill bit that's where we're drilling. Oh. And then same thing here. Now let's look at the size of our screws. The screws are a little bit thicker, quite a bit thicker than the drill bit. So I'm gonna drill, I'm gonna make my pilot hole slightly thicker. That's still smaller. You can see the uh, screw behind it. So the better your, your pilot hole, the less likelihood you have of the wood 
splitting. You really don't want the wood to split. A trick that my dad taught me is when you're uh, putting screws into wood, a new hole in the wood, you want to put soap at the end of the screw. Nice how the, the screws kind of magnetically stick to the tip of the um, drill bit, which is the driver bit. Okay, that makes it easier when you don't have to hold it. All right. Well, that was not necessarily the smoothest, but it is attached and it's tight. So let's go to the other side and see how we make out. All right, so we're attached. I'm going to do some sanding on these two pieces of wood. This one is to be trim in the front bottom of our uh, drawer shelves where it, the drawers meet the top of the dresser. It's actually leftover uh, wood from the shelves that we cut to fit inside the bottom part of the dresser. I also have this board, which I'm thinking of using across the top of the dresser, the very top as a header. <laughs> to do the top two. I'm just using my dowel to push it out. I have it dry fit in there and I have two blank edges. The lighter match, the lighter side will match the inside of the cabinet and I'm just going to color it with my marker. I'm happy with that color match so I'm going to add the glue. I'm just going to pop out each of the pegs, just put a little bit of glue and then in order to get it flush with the outside, I just have a piece of wood. So I'm pushing in from the inside and I'm holding this against the hole so I know it will end up 
being flush with the outside of the cabinet. That's how you do that. All right, so we can see our bottom trim is glued. At least it has a two hour cure. Um, within 24 hours, it will be a permanent cure. The next thing is to do a dry fit of the trim going up and across the top. So that's gonna be consist of three pieces. The trim for the middle here is actually the drawer slides just fit like a glove in this area. So I'm gonna do the dry fit. It has this um, ridge here, which fits just beautifully in here. I started at the top, I'm gonna to slide it down and stop right where it meets the trim, nice and flush, the bottom trim, I should say. And then this one, we're going to do the same thing. It'll fit right above. And I've snap into place we're going to have to do some clamping when we glue that but right now it's a dry fit and it does stay in thankfully um, on its own this is a piece of uh, the board i was originally going to use the whole board but i just cut with my jigsaw cut the uh, an edge piece off and i'm going to glue it here i thought it looked a little nicer we're gonna start by putting the Gorilla Glue on these ridges, kind of where these two edges meet, on this side and that side, and then we'll slide it in. I have some paper towels here in case some glue oozes out so we can uh, wipe that away right away. Again, here's our top trim, dry fit, still fits. This is going to need to be clamped. I don't know if it's really necessary, but I, I want to make sure this part is clamped both tight together and also tight to the cabinets. This is just big enough to do that. So it's time to remove our clamps and see how our trim is looking. We're almost at the end of this project now. It's very exciting. I'm gonna take off my little clamp. Okay. Oh, I'm pleased, I'm pleased with it. So we'll get some uh, beauty shots <laughs> of the item. Uh, complete and, and we'll stock it with some paint and we'll put some photos at the end of the video so you can see how it looks. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.